presented by Regions Bank. And tonight, the fifth-ranked team in the country is in mid-Missouri, trying to keep pace in a loaded SEC. Mizzou Arena is ready for the fifth-ranked team. Tennessee 19-6, and 9-3 and three in the league as the Tigers look for their first conference win of the season. This league is absolutely loaded. Six-ranked teams at the top. Tennessee currently one game behind Alabama for the league regular season crown as we come down the home stretch. Tom Hart alongside Dane Bradshaw. Tennessee's got it on both ends of the floor. Great offense, elite defense, and one of the best scorers in the best league. The front runner for SEC Player of the Year in Dalton Connect. He is having arguably the most impressive individual offensive performance performance in Tennessee basketball history. Not only is he averaging 25 points per game, but he just seems to be getting better as the year goes on. It's amazing to see no matter what defenses throw at him, he keeps giving his best effort, and on the road is where he truly shines. This is a take care of business game for the Tennessee Vols. Rick Barnes has been named SEC Coach of the Year. He's been coming to Columbia, Missouri for a long time, back to his big 12 days with Texas. Now in his ninth season on Rocky Top, five straight NCAA appearances and meanwhile Dennis Gates in Missouri looking for a conference win trying to avoid the only other time in school history they finished winless in the league that was 1908 in the Missouri Valley a talented team that is stuck on the wrong end of some close games including their weekend matchup with Ole Miss so they led at halftime and led by 10 with 12 minutes to play but let it get away Zakai Ziegler runs the offense for this Tennessee team is one of five SEC teams averaging better than 80 points a game. Here's Connect with the runner high off the glass, rebounded by Noah Carter. Look at the starters for Missouri, including Jordan Butler, who's starting his eighth consecutive game inside the freshman from Greenville, South Carolina. A push off, an illegal screen. Charge to Tamar Bates, who's been Missouri's most reliable scorer in conference play. Here's a look at the starters for Tennessee. These are the regulars, four players that made at least 53s this season. Ziegler's one of them. And it's knocked out of bounds by Josiah Jordan James to the band leader. Tennessee tried to go to a counter. Missouri likes to switch a lot, so they try to feed James on the slip. Good deflection by Nick Honor for Missouri. Missouri is 6-8 and eight at home this season. They haven't won a game since December 30. Bates looking for Carter, and Vescovy gets whistled for a push-off. Vescovy and Ziegler, those guards can hold their own down low, but if there is an area that Missouri may be able to take advantage of, it's posting up Noah Carter where they can get some good action down low. If Noah Carter can have a great game, Missouri can hang in there and be in there towards the end, possibly pull off an upset. Yeah, back-to-back 20-point -back games in non-conference, first time in his career with a fifth-year player out of Dubuque, Iowa. Sean East back. Last game had his best game as a Tiger after missing two with a knee injury. Got off balance and turned it over. Solo by Josiah Jordan James. Jonas Adu finds Connect and Connect gets fouled by Butler. Nice patience by Adu. He got that post up a little bit further off the block than he's accustomed to. Handles the bobbled ball and collects it and then here comes connect who was looking to get a poster you mentioned in our open the Dalton connect is getting better as the season goes along that is unheard of especially for a transfer from a lower level up to the SEC in his last 11 games connect has scored 20 points or more nine times he scored scored 30 points or more four times that includes a pair of 35 point games with opponents have so much film on you and they can throw different looks and see what worked for other teams, this and that, and the athletes and the coaching in this league, for Dalton Connect to be scoring the way he is is just an absolute historic performance for him. He picks up his dribble. Deep victory to Carter. Stepped around, Connect kept it alive thanks to a tip from Butler. And he's fouled. And Noah Carter will go to the free throw line. 
This is an area Missouri must be better at in this game. Good physical rebound there, keeping it alive. They have been getting destroyed at the free throw line against opponents. It has lost them games this year, and they're going to have to earn that whistle if they want to hang in this one. Great example for Ole Miss. Went 22 of 30 from the free throw line, all in the second half on Saturday in Oxford. Carter knocks the first down. East had 25. That was a Missouri high for him. And even though they ended up attempting the same number of free throws, the Rebels' journeys to the line came, came when they were down. Talking with Dennis Gates about that second half disparities. He made it sure does make it easier when the opponent is shooting a free throw every 40 seconds. Vescovy to connect. Back to Vescovy for three. And a push off inside. Parmy over the top and out of bounds. Baseball season has started, but I didn't have this being a one nothing game three minutes in. <laughs> well, Missouri's got to be thrilled with it because even though Missouri was the faster paced team a year ago, right now, faster tempo favors Tennessee. Carter can't hit the back shot. shot. Excuse me, Tom, but I mean, what's that three or four post ups that Carter's had already in this game? Ziegler gets blocked. Good help defense from Butler. He's had 17 in Missouri's win against Tennessee in Nashville last year in the SEC tournament. That was a Friday morning thriller to push Mizzou into the weekend. And the season they saw them pick up their first NCAA tournament win since 2010. A lot of arms on that one. Don't connect looking for a whistle. Doesn't quite get the SEC player of the year <laughs> type respect quite yet. He switches with James on East. He throws it off of Carter's head. Missouri swept Tennessee last year, won February 11th. Golson at 18 and a game winning three late. We'll show you that one later. Then in the tournament, Missouri was able to make its first appearance in the tournament semis thanks to an energetic win in Nashville. That was just a magical season for Dennis Gates and the Missouri Tigers. And you're right, Golston's a guy that doesn't get talked about enough this season when everybody talks about the loss of Des Moines Hodge, Toby Brown, but Golston he also had that incredible game winner. Was it, it was UCF earlier in the game. Yeah, from midcourt. Tennessee with the takeaway. Jordan Ganey had just checked into the game, but he can't corral that deep pass. Well, Zakai Ziegler, one of the best point guards in the SEC, but that's back-to-back -back possessions with questionable decisions. He tried to go in, jump off one foot, one hand into traffic. That time he forces a deep pass with not much advantage. Teams have combined over seven with five turnovers. Early six o'clock Central Time start. Still waiting for the shots to go. East tracks down the miss. Steps through, can't finish again. And the loose ball corralled by Jonas Aden. They're trying to drive on icy roads right now. Nothing pretty. Just uncharacteristic basketball for Tennessee right now. But credit Missouri, a lot of pressure defense. And Tennessee only averages 10 turnovers a game. And so for them to already have three in the first four minutes shows you some of this Missouri pressure and uncharacteristic decision making by some of Tennessee's veteran players. Combined 0 for 9 between the two with three turnovers each. You drove this sloppily on Rock Quarry Road. You'd end up on a ditch. Here's Bates. East to Bates. Tennessee's really clogging the lane. The little leaner won't go. Somebody needs to take the lid off the bucket while we step away for this timeout. The foul is on Tennessee. What an ugly start. I promise it's going to get better.
SEC men's basketball is presented by Regions, official bank of the SEC. That was win number one head-to-head -head for Missouri versus Tennessee last year. Sixth-ranked Tennessee squad went down at home to a Mizzou squad that was just playing with a lot of momentum last season. One of the stars of that team, Kobe Brown, is back in the building tonight. That's not him. Uh, NBA All-Star break, and Brown with a break from his time with the Clippers back in the building. They sell leather in Southern California, apparently. Like diamonds, too. <laughs> Talk with Dennis Gates about it. He's like, I can't shake the guy. He's been here since Thursday. He just loves Columbia, Missouri. That career numbers really don't illustrate what an elite player he became. Last season, 16 points a game, went 30th overall to the Clippers, turned himself into an NBA player. Yeah, he, he was a guy that I just didn't think could be an option A on a NCAA tournament type team. But Dennis Gates said, no, I was so hard on him. I actually benched him early in the season a couple times and said, you shoot the ball when you're open or you're coming out. And so it was a maturation process. And man, did that pay off into a first round pick and one of the best stories the SEC had last season. Things have, I'm sorry, things have changed this season, though. And when you look at Tennessee, it's oh, like man. an easy one here. Bates fell down, gaining with the finish for a first field goal of the game. But this is a Tennessee team that prides itself not playing down to the competition or looking at the scoreboard when they're up big. Their past two games at Arkansas and against Vanderbilt, they're averaging a victory of 32 points. And so this is just an extremely sloppy, sleepwalking type start for Rick Barnes' club. And that game against Vanderbilt on Saturday, Tennessee went on a 20 to 1 early. They never trailed, and they got 33 points off 19 turnovers. And go figure their first bucket tonight comes off a turnover. Yeah, a few games back, Ganey's teammates made fun of him for not dunking a fast break. He said, I was going too fast. This time he slows up and still gets a 1 out of 10. But <laughs> French judge is tough. <laughs> but still gets the two points. Here's Connect. What are you thinking as a team, either side, when you get off to such a slow start shoot? Well, they got to find a way to get their energy because right now this is not a full arena, and it's human nature to look at the opponent's record. And Tennessee, they have veterans. They've got extremely great coaching, guard play, depth, you name it. And so they've got to find a way to just get their own energy when the crowd might not be able to give it to them in this one. Here's Zakai Ziegler at the free throw line. Saturday at 1 Eastern, noon Central, Michi Johnson at number 20, South Carolina. And a two game losing streak. They got a tough one as they play host to Florida. By the way, speaking of teams that Sleepwalk, you know, Texas A&M last Saturday got off to a great start against Tennessee, had a massive home win, and then midweek they went to Vandy against a one-win team, and they never woke up. Ended up dropping a key decision on the road to Vanderbilt. As soon as you take a big step forward, you take a step back. But that sure shows how competitive the league is. There appears to be nine teams that will get into the NCAA tournament. And that's where Alabama has the lead in the standings and why they're in that driver's seat. As you, you mentioned a game like Texas A&M losing at Vanderbilt, Tennessee not defending their home court against South Carolina. Alabama's avoided that slip-up type loss. I mean, they won the games they're supposed to win and a few maybe they're not supposed to win. And it's going to be a nail-biter coming down the stretch. Bama has won 15 consecutive conference home games. So. Protecting the home court certainly key. Right in front of Eli Drinkwich. Sean East will pull the trigger. Tennessee fans know Eli stands on business. <laughs> but he sits courtside. <laughs> Thought I'd explain that one to you. Here's East. And a touch for Jesus Cavaliero Martin. And he draws the whistle and we'll go to the free throw line. When Martin comes in the game, something's going to happen. I like his activity. His minutes have been up and down a little bit, but he, he has a football player's mentality. <laughs> As he gets the applause. Coach got the fam with him tonight, had the team out in the field indoors, and they will get after it. Spring practice starting next week. Here's Martin at the free throw line. 
Senior from Malaga, Spain. That is a great looking jacket, huh? Cotton Bowl win over Ohio State. I was in Atlanta, my hometown the other day, wearing a Mizzou hoodie. Run to the store, an Ohio State fan decided to talk trash to me. I said, sir, this must be the first time an Ohio State football fan has ever talked trash to a Missouri football fan. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> a little mix up on the up, huh? <laughs> I guess so. Best can be returns. This is a Tennessee team that has given up five offensive rebounds to Missouri already. And on top of that, Four personal fouls committed in the first five and a half minutes. We saw shoot around today. Dennis Gates in this club was very energetic, very locked in. And when you have a team like this, it's not that they're going to quit on the season. None of these coaches are ever going to allow it. But if you give them hope as the opponent, all of a sudden they get that enthusiasm like, hey, we can get this. You want to be able to give them a knockout blow early, and that is not fun at all. Missouri's proven to be the more excited team in this one despite the records. Shaw and Anthony Robinson the second both on the floor. Warm and Jacques. Four reserves with only one starter. Missouri's bench has been outscored by a 20 to 12 average in conference play. There's a massive drop off and reserves trying to keep the Tigers in this one. But the aggressiveness on the defensive end by Missouri. They like to play a lot of zone, but it's been mostly man, double team in the post, some just really scrappy. And when Tennessee has gotten penetration, they just have not been able to get the correct kick out. And in that time, Awaka with the poor footwork. Carolero gets it inside. Here's Shaw. See Bates pull that over 40% from three. That's an open look for him. Another Tigers turnover followed by a foul. It's a fifth turnover. And it goes with a 0 for 8 start from the floor. And you'll see Dennis Gates right now. I think he's saying the same thing. The Bates like, hey, you passed up an open three-point shot, and guess what we got out of that possession? A turnover. Uh, they've got to take those, especially when they're don't have as much firepower offensively. When you get a good look for your best score, you got to take it. Bates has given Mizzou 18 and a half points a game over the last 15. He has turned into a consistent double-figure score. One for 14 start from the floor combined. Tom, to Tennessee's credit, this is Rick Barnes basketball defensively. If they can go on scoring droughts, but oftentimes they make you go on a drought as well. Not many teams can start the way they have and be up two right now. <laughs> Shot clock is late. Mayshack with the drive, and that's redirected. That's one area Missouri has improved this year is their rim protection. They've got length at the rim. East no. Missouri is 0 for Tuesday. Going back to that Missouri half court offense where Bates, part of that 50 40 90 club right now, and just doesn't even look at the rim. You got to come off that looking to shoot. Eventually turns into a turnover, especially against Tennessee, as good as they are defensively. You're lucky to get one good look at the basket in possession. Vescovy with the ball fake, open for three. It would get better, only marginally so to this point. Now one for 17. Mayshack floater, and he's fouled. 
Abor Majak commits the foul. We've got a six to two Tennessee lead. The Volunteers with a couple of three run home runs. And as we head to the bottom of the seventh, Tigers looking for some. Well, it's the Tennessee team, which is uh, fifth in the country, 19 and six with a net of six, five and five in quad one. Currently, Joe Lenardi's got him as a two seed. And you dive a little bit deeper into the numbers, 15th in offensive efficiency, fifth in defensive efficiency. It may not look like it at this moment tonight, but there, there's, <laughs> there's a no lot. Way. That, <laughs> there is a lot that Tennessee does right on an average night. You know, this is below average. And, and it's really not fair to this year's Tennessee team, but I think Tennessee fans have PTSD over the past couple years of these massive scoring droughts where they put too much pressure on their defense to win games. And that's where Dalton Connect has come in and been the guy to get them out of droughts such as these. And they have balance offensively to feed off of that. But with this two for nine start, four turnovers, the best thing you can say about Tennessee is, and we're still up four on the road. And that, that's what does make them different is how good they are defensively that can survive some of these scoring droughts. But Tennessee fans would feel a lot better if they didn't start the way they did against an 0 12 Missouri Tiger team. This does with an early start here in Columbia Central Time Zone. And the fact that Missouri hasn't won a conference game. The atmosphere in the building kind of started off like yeah. that 11 a.m. round of 64 game in Boise. You know, Mayshack makes it a three point play. Which I'm sure Rick Barnes would love that excuse from his players. Hey, coach, you know, we weren't many fans here. Early tip. 12. What'd you expect? Yeah. There's a lot of orange in the building relative to the crowd. Three SEC teams rank in the top 10 of the net. That's tied for first among all conferences. Tennessee being one of them. Bates has it blocked. Missouri has started this game 0 for 10. Volunteers have looked out of sorts offensively, and Butler with the ring denial. Off of James would give it to Mizzou. Well, on the other end of the court, Adu has become one of the premier shot blockers in the league. Look at his timing. He's always the second guy off the ground. He never jumps early, and he's got that amazing win wingspan and standing reach that he can be the second guy off the ground and get the shot blocked. So efficient, high IQ defender. 100th block for Adu. He's the 18th different volunteer to hit that number. And a denial by Vescovy. Bates with the reverse. Shot of the foul. Nothing doing for the Tigers. Well, and Missouri has had some good, clean looks at the rim with their better players. East has missed a couple bunnies. That time Bates does as well. And so you love the effort and energy that Missouri's playing with. But right now they are 0 for 5 on layups. There it is. Tamar Bates for three. And now Adu. Whoa, we've got back to back buckets. This is unbelievable. And it's an explosion. It's like the All-Star game. Calm down, Tom Hart. I see your pent-up demand for basketball. Oh! Three in a row! <laughs> Somebody broke the seal, and now they can't stop scoring. This is where I have to lay out, right? <laughs> yes. There's way too much going on. Quick pass to James in the corner, and there ends our streak. The reach in by Bates is a takeaway from Missouri. Six turnover for Tennessee. Missouri likes those strip and rip type opportunities. And you just got to be more careful with the ball. Kai Ziegler, as good of a defender as he is, he, he's a shorter defender, so Missouri is okay shooting over him when he closes out. They 
Shaq can't finish. Nate's got his hands on another one. And then Vestavy yanked it right back. Missouri started this game 0 for 11 before this happened. Well, a great skip pass because Tennessee likes to load up on that help side defense. And Bates, arguably the most improved player in the SEC. Transferred in from Indiana, and he would be the first ever to finish with a 50 40 90 season, respective shooting percentages. Second in school history with a free throw run that saw him make 37 consecutive, second only to everybody's favorite, Jason Sutherland. Here's Bates again. There they are. I can't help but think, hey, if five and orange closes out with you, go ahead and let it fly. But they've been missing more than they make. Connect. It's fouled by Honor. Honor's been in disbelief of that one. And so is Dennis Gates. The chicken wing, or is this the entire thigh? What do you got? I can see the complaint there. Dalton Connect with a hook right above the head and neck area. I may have seen a hand check prior to Connect. Put that right hand out. 76% from the line on the season. Missed his first two of this one. At 39 points in the game a month ago against Florida. And that game he had four of six from three. Also at 32 against Vandy, 37 against North Carolina. He is a scoring machine. I think one of the least appreciated things about Dalton Connect this season that Rick Barnes told us at shoot around today was his ability to handle all this attention. I mean, he's never been in the spotlight like this before, and all he's done is take it head on, not get arrogant. His teammates love him and his success that he's having. And he, his be best quality, Coach Barnes says, is a short memory on the offensive end. If he makes a bad play or misses a shot, he's on to the next one. East drills it. Sean, he's 47% from deep. Dennis Gates telling us, that, yeah, maybe he needs to shoot more of those. He need to push both my guys in the backcourt, Honor and East, to be a little bit more aggressive. James finds Adu, promptly loses it. Missouri looking for the lead. They haven't led since it was 1-0. Bates into connect. Connect for three. Tennessee started 0 for 5 from deep. I think James missed a streaking connect. He could have had a dunk on that end of the court, was ahead of the defense. You brought this point up earlier, but the fifth ranked team in the country has allowed winless Missouri to hang around. East commits a foul. That is his second. And that is a problem for Missouri. Both teams have found some rhythm finally on offense. Well, this has turned into something. Neither team shooting the ball well early on. Combined 0 for 10 start before the first bucket was made. But Dane, this is a Mizzou team that's looking for its first conference win. They haven't beaten a top five team since they beat Patrick Young. And that Florida team that he played on, that was a minute ago. But what an opportunity that's now presented itself here past the midway point of the first half for this Missouri squad. Yeah, I can't say enough about Dennis Gates' team's effort right now to start this game. I mean, they are not acting like they're 0-12 whatsoever. It has not been pretty, but they've made this game ugly intentionally. And it hadn't been mixing in a bunch of different zones and different coverages it's been a lot of just man to man we're going to guard the ball make life difficult on tennessee and this is a missouri team that they've been competitive in these games it's not like they're just getting blown out everywhere they go it's just been trying to put together 40 minutes because they don't have the depth they're accustomed to having and of course the injury bug hit them early in conference play but you see how much fight they still have in them 
That includes Caleb Brill, who's still out with a thumb injury. He'll connect with the turnaround. Jacques going on the floor for it. And we got a possession error belonging to Missouri. What an effort. Every Thursday, women's doubleheader for you in the SEC Network and the ESPN app. This week, it's undefeated at number one, South Carolina, followed by Auburn and 13th ranked LSU. Jacques may have broken the floor when he dove for it on the logo. <laughs> What an effort by the 7-2 senior from the South Sudan. Got to call this one the Sudan slide here, right? Look at that. Gets the crowd on their feet. Anytime 7-foot-2 is the first guy to the deck, he serves a standing ovation. Here's Carter. Good energy up and under on James. Well, that's where if you're Rick Barnes, you're really frustrated because you know Carter is a pump fake pivot guy in the lane and one of your veterans, James, bites on him. First lead for Mizzou since it was 1-0 and then they give it right back in the Mizzou foul. Well, and that's where Tennessee loves to get the basketball down low, but on the other end, here's Noah Carter. with the pump fake, gets the defender in the air. He's best when he can score on angles instead of over the top of the defense. Well done by Carter. So Toby will walk at the free throw line. And this Tennessee team not having a good shooting night. Five for nine from the free throw line. 0 for five from deep. Four for 15 from the floor. This is after they went 48 and 45 percent from the floor against Vandy. Field goal and three at eight of uh, an eight of 11 on top of it. Honor tracks it down to the backcourt. Shot clock's at five. Cut off by James in the spin. Somehow got through. Timeout taken by Dennis Gates after Nick Otter reclaims the lead for the hometown Tigers. Well, it's a Kai Ziegler did his best to stay in front of Honor. And James comes over for the double, but then he's going to lead the double. And Honor's just like, okay, I'll just keep moving around in the paint here. Gets the angle and muscles through Ziegler, which you have been able to do this season. Zeus started the game 0 for 11, 5 for 8 since. Look at this. Eli Drinkwood is yelling after a high five from Truman over to the Tennessee huddle saying, You ain't that tough. <laughs> Still standing on business. What an effort by honor. Tigers have only finished winless in conference play once. That was when they were in the Missouri Valley Conference. First year in the Valley, 07, 08. Only played five conference games that year. And especially after last year's success, uh, there's a big group on this roster that have won before. They know what winning looks like. And so you see their competitive energy in this one, despite things going against them this season. James is able to finish. No, that's as tough of a two as you've seen from Josiah Jordan James this season. I, I really like him going at the body, seeking out the contact where he ordinarily likes to do the pull up. East into Ziegler, they'll count it. Ziegler getting frustrated right now as Missouri's trying to back down the smaller defender, which has seldom worked this season. But East is going to get to his spot. And Ziegler puts those arms down instead of straight up. And the crafty lefty, Sean East, gets the and one. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but in Tennessee's first meeting with Vandy, it seemed like they did that regularly, trying to get Ziegler in the paint. And, and typically, Rick Barnes is okay. Like, look, you think you can post up my small guard? Good luck with that. But every once in a while, it can work. And Sean East is a guy that's going to dribble until he finds one for himself. Or his teammates, and he's the exception. When you say don't dribble the air out of the ball, 55 is allowed to do it because good things happen when he has the ball in his hand. Louisville product played a bunch of different stops. Bradley and UMass, and Juco before coming to Columbia. Ziegler's able to spin it in. That all starts with a great seal down low. Tennessee's been able to get a couple good dump downs early or recently, and that time Ziegler 
able to capitalize off the space. I may have blacked out, but I swear this was a terrible game for like the first eight minutes. <laughs> now it's changed. That was yesterday. East goes down, and they say he stepped on the sideline. Dennis Gates is stepped on the sideline because he was tripped. And on the previous possession, look at a walk of clearing space down low. And Ziegler is smart to see that if he can't get that post entry feed, and they're fighting over the top there, and he's got him sealed. The other side's open. James for three. And Awaka got fouled on the rebound by Jordan Butler. Missouri just doesn't have a lot of size down low. They've got length and height, but in terms of strength, that's where Awaka and these Tennessee bigs can really do some damage. So Butler to the sideline and Toby Awaka at the free throw line. 73% on the season from the line for Awaka. You mentioned Missouri's depth. A reminder today what they're missing with Caleb Grill's sideline with that thumb injury. He threw down a 360 dunk during shoot around today that blew my mind. And oh, by the way, playing the scout team, he played Dalton Connect. And I don't know if there is a more apt guy to play Dalton Connect than we've seen going against Tennessee as a scout team or all season. Yeah, between him and Tanjay, who's also injured, but he's starting to get back healthy. That scout team is looking pretty good for Missouri. Carter spinning on a walk. And he's able to draw the foul. Carter's had at least six, if not seven, post ups. And sometimes it's been against guards, and other times on the five man. That time, instead of trying to back him down, he was trying to be a little more shifty on the taller defender, get past him with his speed. We've already had 16 personal fouls whistled in this game. No Carter at the free throw line. That was the sixth against Tennessee, Missouri being the bonus. The next Carter, 77% from the line. He had a fantastic season last year on that tournament team from Mizzou. Had a big finish over the last six games. He was regularly over the 20 point mark. I think he's off to a really good start in this game. That's five points and four rebounds. And here's why that four rebounds impresses me. Sean East, the point guard for Missouri in conference play, leads the team in rebounds at four a game. To me, that's unacceptable. You've got to have guys like Noah Carter, Aiden Shaw getting in the mix. And so far in this first half, Noah Carter had an has answered that challenge. Tiger shows zone for the first time. Connect finds it in the spot. James with the rebound left it short. Got blocked by the backboard there on the other side. Yeah, the path. East cuts down the lane, and he's able to draw this. That's his second on a walk-up. Ganey okay? He looks a little wobbly. Maybe Ganey got poked in the eye. He was covering East on that drive. I don't know if it was East hand as he was going through or not, but East is a difficult guy to stay in front of. 87% from the free throw line. Gymnastics takes over the SEC Network Friday night. Starts with Missouri going to the plane to take on Auburn, then Kentucky at Arkansas. Mizzou's Mara Titrasaley posted the Tigers' first perfect 10 on bars in program history last Friday. Try to repeat it on the road against Auburn. Eighth lead change of this contest. And Missouri knew to hang in there in this game, they had to get to the free throw line. Six of nine compared to seven of 11 for Tennessee. That's a huge positive for Dennis Gates and this Missouri team. Ziegler off balance, and the tip in goes. They're going to wave it off and say it was a push off. 
Well, Rick Barnes and the staff aren't going to like that call, but but this all starts with a, with a bad shot. They've taken a lot of these one foot flying floaters. I mean, that's the second of those type shots by Ziegler. Dalton Connect started the game with one of these off balance fading away runners, and that's one you typically see the officials let them play on. But Noah Carter, again, who's been extremely physical in this game. Didn't gotta get credit for the rebound there, but certainly saved his team two points and got himself to the free throw line. So here's Carter. Three or four from the free throw line tonight. Missouri has lost 12 straight to top five teams. The last win, uh, part of the last win, 2013. Patrick Young with the two points and three boards. He got outplayed by Lawrence Bowers, who had 17 of 10 in that. That was a Billy Donovan coach Florida team. That's how long it's been. Carter with the foul. Got Ganey across the floor. Three point Missouri lead as we step away for a break. When we return, we'll hear from Pat Bradley, Richard Hendricks, and Peter Burns. What's up, y'all? Coming up at half, we got a little baseball highlight midweek action. Also, show you Texas A&M in a must-win game against Arkansas. What are we seeing right now, though? Rich? A defensive struggle. Both teams are going to really have to execute in the second half. And shooting struggles remind you of Tom Hart when he was in school in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, is that right? Class was optional back then. 22-19, Missouri with the lead over number five, Tennessee. Well, Tennessee's 0 for 7 start from 3 has something to do with your in common with your freshman GPA, though, right? <laughs> there was a point in there. Yeah. <laughs> they know you're supposed to attend class. Yeah, you know, if I'm <laughs> if I'm Tennessee, I, I can't wait to get to the locker room and just try to reset. If I'm a Tennessee player, you I'm dreading going, going <laughs> to the locker room right now. <laughs> so it's uh. Yeah, but this is critical for Missouri. I mean, we saw how well they played for, what, about 30 minutes against Ole Miss. And try to extend this lead, hang on to it a big few minutes. Don't allow Tennessee to get any momentum heading into the locker room. You see what's at stake for Tennessee. Ganey at the free throw line. He took a shot to the neck on that drive from Sean East a couple of minutes ago. Ganey's had an up and down season. It seems like every time he has a great shooting night, he follows that on the mountaintop to the valley. He was 0 for 6, and that included an 0 for 4 from deep in the win Saturday against Vanderbilt. Zubai Deuce. What do you think Barnes is going to say at half? Like, what's the message when you started like this as a top team on the road? They need to do more of that. Get some turnovers, of course, because they have not gotten any transition, hardly any fast break opportunities. On the offensive end, they act like they hadn't played together before. And it's guys, make the right read, play together. The, the turnovers have been killing them on that end of the court. And that's the most surprising thing is the, is the decision making. But I think they've got to try to get this ball inside more. I mean, that's where Missouri is very thin. It's on the front line. They got to make this an interior game. Mayshack couldn't hit the layup. And a well designed out of bounds play. Honor to Bates for three. And it's rebounded by Besky. There's an opportunity to try to get Adu on Carter. There's some sort of high low. Now they've got East guarding AD. The switch, connect, finds him. Yeah, just like we had drawn up, he scores over the seven foot two guy. <laughs> they had mismatches multiple times, and that time they got it to him. But AD is really confident with that left hand. That is a difficult shot. East 
lost best could be and banked it in. That's a couple times. He's just gotten in there and lowered his shoulder and gotten space on that floater. Bates holds in the air ball for Navy. Here's Nick Connor. That one got tipped by Gaines. And now East with another. Largest lead of the game for Mizzou. Tigers up five on number five, Tennessee. Rick Barnes takes a timeout. Sean East is going to get into the lane here, bump off the defender, initiate contact, and kiss it off the glass. And Noah Carter makes this play happen. He's the first to the offensive glass, and that's the best time to get an open three is off a missed shot when the defense is sucked into the paint. And East, who has just really excelled shooting the ball this season. Now, you did not call this guy a shooter last year. 22% from three a year ago to 47% this year. Not a high volume three point shooter, but an efficient one. And I don't know that I've ever seen a jump year to year like that. He's had been called games. Yeah, he's had eight 20 point games this season. His first 90 games, he only had two of them. And as you mentioned, he's another guy that Dennis Gates has had to say, be a little bit more selfish. Hey, it's selfish when you don't take those shots. He's a pass first guy, likes to get his teammates involved. Almost embarrassed when you talk to him about his offensive game as a scorer, but they got to have him. And he's stepping up so far in this first half. Missouri started this game 0 for 11. Since then, the Tigers have made 8 of 12. Has seen another cold stretch. One for its last seven, making one for eight. Offensive rebound, and the putback is short. And then the challenge shot goes for Awaka. Awaka is ready for the fight down low. And he's got a couple fouls on him on the other end of the court, but he can really impose his will on that end. Bates has a tip. Great help by Awaka, and a takeaway by Tennessee. Sixth steal of the game for the Big Orange. Nice pass. And a locker with a high percentage look. A great dribble penetration by Mayshack with his head up, draws two defenders, and that's making the game easy right there. If Tennessee can just not turn the ball over, they'll get a good look. And if they miss, that's Missouri's weakness is cleaning up the defensive glass. Bates to Carter. Not there for Mizzou. Neither team has been above 35% shooting in this game. Ziegler with the turnaround, and that's rejected by Butler. Second difference. Shot clock and game clock. East through traffic and a reach in foul on Tennessee. I believe Mesha. East is such a unique offensive player. Usually, if you guard a guy for a few bounces, you think you've got him and he'll give the ball up. But with East, he's going to keep coming at you. And you cut him off one way, he's going to go the other way. And you can't open those hips up, let him get the angles. Normally, Tennessee's so good at keeping those guys out of the paint with their one-on-one -on -one defense. But East is just a really crafty ball handler. The change a couple of games makes. Tennessee and Missouri have combined for 53 right now. Tennessee scored 51 on its own. In the first half against Vanderbilt, largest margin in an SEC game since 99. The lead was 51 to 20 at the half on Saturday. Jacques returns for Mizzou. Another one coming for East. Tennessee, number zero, Jonas 
smart substitution by Rick Barnes. Don't let Awaka, as aggressive as he is, go and get the offensive rebound. Don't let him get a cheap third foul to end the half. Has 14 in this first half. A lot of work to get this thing to a tight game. After a slow start for both sides. Here's James for three. Vescovy fights for it. Missouri will take a lead into the locker room against the fifth ranked team in the country. Volunteers are just two for four with trailing at the half this year. And the Tigers looking for their first win against a top five foe since 2013. That's a story in Como. Now let's get to the dangerous trio in Charlotte led by the superhero Peter Burns. By regions from Columbia, Missouri, where the Tigers 10 years and a day ago had their last win against a number five team. And they're looking to match that with a three point lead at the break over fifth ranked Tennessee. Welcome you back courtside. Tom Hart alongside Dane Bradshaw. Not a lot to brag about in the first five, ten minutes of this game, but Missouri's been hanging around and that's given them some life. Yeah, Missouri's played really hard. They've gotten themselves to the free throw line. And if you're Coach Rick Barnes in Tennessee, I'm not sure you don't conference in at halftime. VFL and motivational speaker Inky Johnson to give these guys some pep talk because they were sleepwalking in the first half. Expect a different Tennessee team here in the second. So look at the stats. Every detail counts. Presented by Pfizer, and of course the big one, Dalton Connect, 0 for 6 from the floor. Tied for his lowest half production wise in SEC play. He had two in the first half at Mississippi State. He finished that game with 28. This dude can get hot in a hurry. What does Tennessee need to do to try to kickstart Connect? Well, first they have to take care of the basketball. They got to have four or less turnovers in the second half. Get shots up at the rim. Let their offensive rebounding take over this game. Adu gets fouled. It's a really good look on the first possession. Such a good pocket pass here by Ziegler as they hit Adu on the short roll. Just a little ball screen action, but. Adu does a nice job after the roll there. Ziegler being patient with the play. Now they've got to convert the free throw line. One of many categories they struggled with statistically in that first half. And that was the third on Butler. Tennessee just five for 12 on layups in the first half. East is coming off of his highest scoring game as a Tiger. Ziegler knocked that one loose. He had 25 Saturday in the loss against Ole Miss. A game that, like this one, Missouri led at the half, and then built that lead 10 minutes into the second half before losing it. Carter for three. That was halfway home. Ziegler for three. Got it. And Tennessee jumps back in front on the first triple of the night from Zakai Ziegler. And that is a tough contested three, but shows you the aggressiveness. Zakai Ziegler's coming out in this game. First he finds, or this half, first he finds Adu underneath the basket that time. Looks off the defense, calls his own number. Now they say that was a two. Imagine, I want to take a look at that one, wouldn't they? Agreed. Shot clock late for East. And now Carter from way deep. Got it! He's playing with some swagger in this game. It wasn't pretty for him in the first half from the field, but he impacted the game with his hustle, his rebounding, and his physicality. It's already the fourth on Butler. Couple of tough threes in a row for each team. Here's Ziegler. Let's see if it's a two or a three. It's yeah, all day a three. I agree. They'll be able to look at that at the next timeout. Meanwhile, Carter from the Missouri River Bridge over all the cranes and everything. That was a deep one. Jacques has to return from Mizzou. 
I like this zone baseline out of bounds defense by Missouri. Tennessee scores so well against teams. A little bit too physical there by Nick Honor. Tennessee was waiting for that zone defense, try to counter with a lob to connect. But teams are just getting abused by Tennessee on this baseline out of bounds with corner threes, lob dunks. Try something different. Rick Barnes did all the place Dalton connect in that spot on the floor. Into Adu. Bound and determined to get it into big number zero, and the 6'11 junior rolls it home. It's one thing to be able to make it with your left hand, it's another to be able to trust it. I mean, that is hours in the gym by Adu with that soft touch. On his offhand. Vescovy with the rip and the save to James. What a play. And now James picks it back up, finds Adu. And East comes out of there with it. Adu just. Gets pushed off balance too easily at times. If he can't stay balanced, kick it out. Honor for three. Got it! He has not hesitated when Ziegler's been on him. He's looking to pull up over the top of him. What started out as an intimate gathering has now gotten a little bit rowdy. Zoo leading by four. If he can see the rim, he's open. Nick Honor's a guy that has such confidence in his shot and confidence from his coach that 30 feet or further is a good look for Missouri. He's at 41 percent from deep. East guides one in. Largest lead for either side. Vescovy can't answer, but James bails him out. Follow tip Adu. Well, that's twice in this game that James has attacked the rim like you don't ordinarily see him. And that time it pays off with the offensive rebounding opportunity. Yanks. Rebounded by Carter. He's outworked everybody in this game, has 35 in black. Here's Vescovy out ahead. Took a bump and a hard fall. And Santiago Vescovy will be going to the free throw line. Well, Tennessee's offense was poor in the first half, but their defense wasn't. However, in the second half, they have been giving up some clean looks. This is just a little uphill ball screen and miscommunication. If you're going to get through it, get through it. If you got to switch, switch. And Dalton Connect's got to take that if Vescovy gets switched off. And here's Noah Carter. We said at the start of this game, Tom, that Noah Carter had to play huge if Missouri wanted any chance. And 35 has played huge. Mayhem moment. And this Missouri team, which is winless in conference play, has come out with an extra level of toughness tonight. They have, and, and you don't typically uh, describe this year's Missouri team as physical, but they have been in this game, and the effort has been there since the tip. If you look back at where Tennessee has struggled in conference play, it's when teams just refuse to get punked by the Tennessee balls, and they bring the fight to Tennessee at Mississippi State, super physical team. South Carolina, extremely physical team. At AM, who loves to get to the free throw line, offensive glass. Those have been the three losses for Tennessee, and Missouri has seen that on film and said, if we want any chance at winning this game, we've got to follow that recipe. So far, they have. They were reviewing a couple plays during the break. One, if that was a three-point shot. 
by Ziegler early to start the half and also if it was a flagrant or not on <laughs> Ziegler's drive. All right, here we go. They, they did correct the three. Okay. Right, which we saw in the moment, but they missed with it. One more point for Tennessee. And they're going to give a flagrant to Mabor Majak. They thought it was unnecessary. I disagree. We I saw the replay during break. Maybe we can show it again here in a moment. It'll be Tennessee's ball because of the flagrant. Yeah. What did you think? We, we've got a great crew, but I, I don't like that call either. I thought Vescovy drew the contact, and yes, he flailed in the air. They do want to protect any airborne type player, but it seemed like the contact was occurring on the drive. And with the way Vescovy fell towards the end there, helped make it look more excessive. But if I'm Dennis Gates, I'm pretty frustrated by that one. So here's Vescovy at the free throw line. It's the first point of the night, Santiago Vescovi, and now because of the flagrant, Tennessee will retain possession on the baseline. Connect fumbles the inbounds and turns it over. Well, we have not seen Tennessee score on their baseline out of bounds offense. And again, I like going zone here because of the way Tennessee's had success against other opponents in league play and really focusing on taking away those ball side corner threes. Two defenders right there, flustering the SEC's leading scorer, Dalton Connect. And how about the combo of Vescovy and Connect? Just three points tonight. And for Missouri, if you told me. Tamar Bates would be one for eight in the first half. Their leading scorer, and they'd be in the lead. I'd say you're lying. But it's been a team effort to make up for two and blacks. Lack of efficiency from the outside. But keep an eye on him because he can get it going quick, too. Seven seconds remain on the shot clock. It'll be a deep corner inbounds for Nick Honor with near seven footer Jonas Adu in front of him. Yeah, they strategically put Adu. They call that their hot action on. Out of bounds defense, you see why. It's so hard to throw over the top of it. Possession never changed, and Tennessee comes out of there with it. Here's Ziegler. He's got Connect on the wing. Connect still hasn't made a field goal, but he drew the foul from the Jacques, which I believe will be his fourth. Excuse me, that's his third. Well, good job by Connect pushing it in transition because he's not got many clean looks in the half court. Tries to draw the contact, doesn't give up on the play. They get Majak going over the top of him there. So here, here's the key if you're Tennessee and Rick Barnes on this baseline out of bound defense we talked about with the zone. You've got to screen the zone just the same way you would the man. So find that person to get it opened up. There you go. Connect at the top of the backboard. Bates tracks it down, somehow hangs on to it, and reverses it in. Tigers by seven, and then Noah Carter with an open floor foul. Well, Tamar Bates does an exceptional job just hanging on to this thing in traffic. It looks like a loose ball, but he gets control and cool, calm, collected at the rim. And Dennis Gates just smiles looking over at us like, <laughs> what y'all see on that one? Yeah, they've been on the wrong end of the whistle throughout the season. Now, they aren't as physical as some teams with their size, and they try to create a lot of turnovers with their zone. But right now he's saying, hey, my team's playing just as hard as the other. But they've kept themselves in this game by getting to the free throw line in the first half. 17 free throw attempts for the game for Missouri and hot shooting in the second half. Pardon me, 13 for Missouri and a foul will go against the Tigers here. Well, and if you're Rick Barnes, you say, hey, this is a Missouri team. Whether they agree with the calls or not, they're foul prone. So put our head down, get to the basket, drive at them hard. 
And as we've mentioned several he's, times, he's counting them up seven to zero, yeah. which are the fouls this half. And he's just seeing the same thing that happened to Missouri at Ole Miss. But you got to give Tennessee some credit there, putting their head down again, trying to initiate the contact. Here's Ganey to the free throw line. 91% of the season and one more coming. Only a few games left in the regular season and they're important Saturday. One Eastern, noon Central, Michi Johnson in South Carolina at home against number 24, Florida. Gamecocks coming off of a tough loss at home to a very talented LSU team. Tigers have made five of their last six field goals. Bates had it blocked. Carolero found it. And here he finds Robinson. Bates. An air ball and Jeanette gathers. Credit A do this twice now. He's had a Missouri guard on the perimeter and forced them to settle from deep. I mean, if I'm Bates or East and I have A do, I'm going to make him move his feet and make him guard me off the bounce. A locker jump hook. He's been the one bright spot for Tennessee offensively, giving them some really good minutes. Ziegler whistled for his second. Tennessee wants to try to start opposing their will down low against the thin front line from Missouri and a walker with soft touch jump hook. That time Ziegler, nobody can harass the ball handler like five and orange. And he's not going to play hesitant or reserve. He knows one way and one way only get up in the ball handler. Shot clock is at four. East down the lane. Follows his own miss. And the Louisville product has 19 in this one. Here's Connect. 17 footer is good for his first field goal of the game. Dennis Gates is, is, Gates is furious. He wanted a timeout after the made basket, and then his team unable to get in transition. Connect gets the bucket. He didn't go out to midcourt to make his point. <laughs> No, <laughs> that is frown the pot. Carolero somehow finesses it in. And a kick from Honor. Well, Missouri's offense is starting to click here in the second half. Just a little pump fake. Gets the angle. Nice finish. Butler re enters. He's got four. Tigers trying to slow down the Tennessee front line, which includes 10 for Tobey Awaka's fifth career double digit scoring game. What kept Tennessee in this game in the first half was their elite defense. They've got to get that back. Boy, if anybody can bring it back, it's that guy right there, Dalton Connect. Bates with a long two, and it's rebounded by Connect. He's made his last two. And he's got a mismatch, and the guy with four fouls on him. They want him to go after Butler. Blue right past him. 
And then blew the layup before Adu cleaned it up. Well, good things happen when Dalton Connect has the ball right now. He's starting to get himself into rhythm despite the missed layup. And he is Tennessee swagger, and they're starting to gain it here in Columbia, Missouri. 12 left in regulation, tied at 46. It's tough to keep Dalton Connect down for long, and finally, He's gotten in the flow of the offense with a couple of makes. Yeah, you mentioned the last time he was held to just two first half points was at Mississippi State where he exploded for 26 in the second half. Don't know if he'll be able to do that in this one, but he's starting to heat up. He's got five points, two of five in this one, and just getting more open looks. Seems in a little bit more of a rhythm as well. Right before the break, even though he missed the layup, he got the opening, got to where he wanted. Led to good things for his team with Adu chipping in as well here in the second half. 46 all. We talked earlier today with both coaches at shoot around, and you mentioned something that happens to teams that have lost more than they've won, and, and that's when they get punched in the mouth. Can they withstand that barrage yeah. and have the confidence to stay in the game versus folding? Yeah. What, what does Missouri need to do to keep that with them right now? Yeah. You're, you're exactly right. It's not that teams ever quit. It's just that it gets tougher to get up off the mat when you've been there before and you have to avoid the here we go again mentality. By no means are they at this point right now, but they're frustrated by Tennessee already being in the bonus. They're frustrated that Tennessee has tied the game. They've got to keep their compo composure and get back to what got them in this position to begin with, was, which was physicality, winning the 50 50 balls, and getting themselves to the free throw line on the other end. And right now, Tom, honestly, I think they've had the ball in their playmakers' hands. But we've seen East and Bates settle too much with pull-up jumpers. You can't get to the free throw line with pull-up contested twos and threes. Carter fighting through the screen, guarded by Connect. Ziegler digs down and gets whistled for the foul, and that is his third. And we've got another timeout on the floor. Tennessee 46, Mizzou 46, all locked up in Como. Well, Jonas Adu is your reigning SEC Player of the Week, and he's playing like it again tonight. Yeah, especially here in the second half, when Tennessee has really needed to dominate the paint. He's been where they need him to be, whether it's the left hand jump hook or the offensive rebound putbacks. And yes, he was SEC Player of the Week, but they need his consistency because I think he's on the verge of being an all SEC type player. Tolu Smith and Janai Broom are the first two bigs you talk about when you talk about best centers in the league. But Jonas Adu is right there, and this is an opportunity. You want to be an all SEC player. 11 minutes on the road, your team's not playing as well as you think they should, and you're going up against one of the worst defensive rebounding teams in the country in Missouri. You have to dominate this game. So far in the second half, Adu has been started that trend. Missouri is dead last in the SEC, 65% defensive rebounding rate, second to last in offensive rebounding rate. Connor Vanover, the 7-5 center, has not seen the floor tonight. Maybe an issue with Jordan Butler in foul trouble. Quick three off the inbounds, and Nick Goddard splashes it home. It's going downhill, puts up an air ball, but Adu helps him out. Are you kidding me? The tip by Adu with the offhand? We talked about him trusting his left, but that was in the air from about five feet. It's tough. Carolero Martin stepped back three after the pump fake, and it's rebounded by Ganey. Mizzou take the way. Honor 
Hill for three again. That's why Rick Barnes loves this guy, his short memory. Three consecutive drives. The first two didn't end the way he wanted. He thought he got fouled. That time he says, forget it, I'm going to attack again. Doesn't get the and one like he thought. But that's the reason why many think Tennessee is a Final Four team because of an offensive star. That's the fifth on Butler, and it comes on a screen 24 feet from the bucket. He's done. Meanwhile, Adu. How about that? And then connect after two unsuccessful trips just says, forget it. I'm coming flying at you, jumping off one leg, going to get the contact, looks at the ref. He wants the and one, doesn't pout, gets back on defense. I mean, the way this guy thrives on the road when Tennessee's backs are against the wall is exceptional. So Mizzou loses its seven-footer Jordan Butler with 10 minutes to play. And now they got... Aiden Shaw and Noah Carter playing interior defense. Connect, challenge three. Barry from the top of the key. He's cold blooded, Tom. We have had four ties and 12 lead changes. Connect has scored 10 in the second half. Carter for three. That's good. Missouri back in striking distance and a timeout for Dennis Gates. Noah Carter says, uh, you're not the only one feeling a Dalton connect. That's his second from about 30 feet for Noah Carter. Dennis Gates is fired up and he is getting all over Terry Oglesby right in the middle of the court. Well, Connect's going to find an opening in this zone here. Just too soft of coverage, not pointing out shooters. Aiden Shaw comes out there a little bit nonchalant. That, that's potential SEC player of the year. you got to come flying at him. And then Noah Carter says, if you think this is here we go again, Missouri, think again. We're in it to win it tonight. I think Gates was upset they didn't get the call fighting through that screen. Yeah. Probably especially after the illegal screen to play before where he's like hey if I tell my guys to set a more physical one You're calling that but they're busting through it and look Tennessee's a tough team to a team to officiate and prepare for because of how physical they are Five second call was started before Tennessee got to the basketball Connect into the paint. Rises and drops. So three level scores on three straight makes. That's why he can get to the rim. He's shown you the three and then shows you the mid range. That's why he's a pro. Ganey with the rip. It'll stay with Mizzou. Here he is. He really doesn't use the ball screen as well as you'd like him to, but he gets in there under control, stops, pops on a dime. Such confidence. And the conditioning you have to be in to be in the gauntlet of SEC play and perform the way he has, especially in second half, really impressive. 25 points a game in conference action for Connect. East shovels it. Shaw immediately gets tripled. And a reach in foul on Jonas Adu. They're able to get a paint touch there. They've got to keep getting Sean East the ball. He's their best penetrator and playmaker for others. Everyone else kind of needs to be set up outside of Bates being a catch and stick guy on her, but really the best playmaker is the man taking the ball out. And a five second violation. Well, good adjustment by Tennessee. They gave up the open corner three. Missouri tried it again on the same play. Tennessee covered it up, causing a five second violation. Turnover number 14 for Missouri. A Jacques returns. Connect being trailed by Bates. Here he is. 
deep three. Oh, hit it from St. Joe. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a design dribble handoff to penetrate off of, not pull up from Coach Barnes. When you're pulling up from the state logo, that's deep. East barely drew iron. Missouri gets it back. Tennessee's largest lead. And they'll have a chance to add to it. Up six with eight to play. You know, Rick Barnes said, part of the Kentucky game, we can't just stand around and watch Dalton. Whoa, what a pass! And a finish by a lockup. And right now, Standing around watching Dalton make plays isn't the bad thing. Tennessee on a 14 to 3 run over the last three plus minutes. And the fifth ranked team in the country has its largest lead of the night. Why is this Rick Barnes best team he's ever had at Tennessee? Because of three in orange. He just makes plays other guys can't. This time jumps in the air, finds his teammate. He has been the difference for the balls here in the second half. Second half honoration, a competent player brought to you by Regions. Dalton Connect has turned his game around since the break. And that was the play that got him going right there, that corner jumper. And then he found an opening in the zone. And here he is going at the rim. That was probably my favorite play despite all the highlights. That going at the basket was after two failed attempts at the rim. At the rim. Rick Barnes loves him because of his short memory. He's always in attack mode. And he's just... Everybody wants to talk these days about having that Mamba mentality and all yeah. that stuff. Few have it. This dude's got it, man. He's unbelievable with his competitiveness. It goes back to when he was getting recruited at Tennessee. He and Jemai Meshack just played one-on-one -on -one like two grade school kids in the backyard. All he wanted to do was play ball on his official visit, none of the other stuff, and you see it paying off on the court. Tennessee on a 7 nothing run. Volunteers have found their stroke Missouri has made five threes in the second half they were smoking hot there for a moment here's Carter to honor for three and an air ball and then Bates touched it across the inline and not a bad look for Missouri despite the bad shot but I like Noah Carter when he gets a five man on him face up beat him off the bounce if you've got a three or a two on you that's when you use your advantage and back him down connect lurking in the top corner honor switches on to him and now Carter comes to trap and connect loses it into the backcourt stolen by Carter and then a foul on Dalton Connect. Good ball pressure by Missouri to make Connect cough it up. He's only had 14 turnovers in all of league play. He's really done a terrific job taking care of the ball, but that's now his fourth turnover on the night. Just felt the pressure, unable to turn the corner. Noah Carter getting one of those rare transition opportunities from Missouri. From Dubuque, Iowa, out of Dubuque High School. Started his college career at Northern Iowa, where he was second team all Missouri Valley. Carter, key part of so many big wins for Missouri last season. Hit a big three in their win against Tennessee in the SEC tournament quarterfinals. Tigers won both meetings with Tennessee last year, including one at Thompson Bowling Arena. I'd venture to say that was the quietest the former Thompson Bowling Arena was all of last season. Tennessee has scored 14 of the last 19 in this game. Danny finds Ziegler for three. Got it! Second triple of the game for Zakai Ziegler. Both have come in the second half. Terrific find by Ganey, but that's all about Ziegler relocating off the penetration. He did not just stand there. Tennessee has made each of its last seven field goals. Here's East. 
Bates downhill. Knocked out of bounds by Majak. Here's that relocation by Ziegler. Look where he is at the top of your screen. He's going to go from wing to corner. And that's how he gets himself open off the penetration. Well done by the veteran guard. Brought another double this time from East. Adu. A lock goes there. Lock and then foul. These inside shots can lead to inside rebounds, and Tennessee able to just bring a fatigue factor to the front line of Missouri. They've got tougher bigs, I shouldn't say tougher, but more depth at that position with the foul trouble that Missouri's faced. First double digit lead for either team. What has been an interesting game after a slow start for both. Been tied four times. We've had 11 lead changes, and now fifth ranked team in the country flexing its way to an 11 point advantage. Walker is really the one player that's put together two consecutive good halves for Tennessee. East finds Carter, and it's rejected by Edu. Well, there he is again. Always the second guy off the ground. He's not going to jump until you do, knowing he can make up for lost time with that wingspan. Here's Bates cutting down the lane. Nine seconds remaining on the shot clock for Missouri. Upset that they're allowing this substitution to come in as they felt Sean Eastar had the ball in his hands because this is a really difficult place to take the ball out of bounds. You don't have a lot of plays drawn up in that corner. Shot clock now at five. East for three. And I connect. Controls it for Tennessee. I just felt like in the first half, East was keeping that dribble alive more. Getting to the paint, initiating the contact at the rim. It'll stay with Tennessee with nine seconds in the shot clock. Fayetteville if you would have stuck with the map <laughs> but the key to that again I, I think that Missouri's done a nice job with that zone defense in those situations that hasn't allowed Tennessee to get the good looks and those baseline out of bounds that they've been so good at all season from the deep corner. Bates the rebound, and that's blocked by Adu. Another big Tennessee stop. Missouri's missed its last seven field goal attempts. Well, Connect has been the star in this second half offensively, but Adu and Iwaka have really brought it on the interior. Ziegler, what a look, and a lock of the flush. Doesn't get much better than that. From your point guard, Ziegler just sees the defender come over. Missouri did not disguise it very well. Only the third assist tonight for Ziegler on a cold shooting night for Tennessee. He had been averaging eight helps over his last five games. 
East looking for some space. He got a bump and will go to the free throw line as Ziegler commits his fourth. 13 point Tennessee lead. Great crowd on hand here tonight at Mizzou Arena. But they're watching the fifth ranked team in the country take a late lead. It's the Volunteers by 13. SEC Network Basketball is presented by Regions. Missouri held a three-point lead at the half of Dalton Connect in Tennessee, have outscored the Tigers 41 to 25 in the second. The lead is now 13. And for the Mizzou fans who showed up, hoping the Tigers would have their first top five win since 2013, including the Taylor family. There's Garrett and his son Davis. That's a Big time power family in Missouri. Yep, look around. I thought you'd have seats closer to the floor, but nice to see the Taylors in the building tonight. Two of my favorites. <laughs> He's borrowed Eli Drinkwood's jacket. 13 point Tennessee lead. Great effort by Missouri, but Tom, when I was at Tennessee playing with Chris Lofton, Oftentimes when we didn't have it going and Chris Lofton did Bruce Pearl would say after the game the difference was we had five and they didn't <laughs> difference in this one has been Tennessee has three and the other team doesn't. It's been a difference the Tennessee fans hope to pay dividends with perhaps their first ever trip to the final four. What kind of impact can Dalton connect make. In postseason. Games? Yeah he's a guy that can just go get his own bucket and. Put the team on his back when they need him to get to the free throw line, and we've seen him. You, you, if you take his three point away, he can get all the way to the rim. You try to take both away, he can pull up from mid range. Just such a talented scorer that has gotten better every single year of his career. Who you got for SEC Player of the Year? I think it's got to be Dalton Connect. I think there's some great candidates when you look at uh, Mark Sears, Janai Broom at Auburn, Antonio Reeves at Kentucky. And I understand some people subscribing to best player on best team. So if Alabama were to, were to win it, you would say Mark Sears. But what Dalton Connect has done has just been different. And that's 25 points per game in league play. Carter ends up all the way in front of the Missouri Missouri's bench after the uh, Bates bucket. When Bates has had an off night and the challenge for Missouri is that they just they, they get good effort off their bench but they don't get any scoring and Tennessee is winning that battle 24 to 3 in bench points that just puts so much pressure on the starting five for Missouri to carry the load offensively third on Nick Honor 258 to play. And Toby Alaka at the free throw line. So absent a major comeback tonight, this is a Missouri team that's still looking for its first conference win. The best opportunity, according to ESPN analytics, will come with Ole Miss comes to town. It's a 44% chance to win. We haven't seen a winless team in the league since Vandy a few years ago. I think it was 19. Is that right? Your LSU in the fighting Will Wade won the SEC title. It was Vanderbilt 18 19. That was when uh, Darius Garland blew out his knee. Yep. And uh, Neesmith was on that team as well, right? Yep. That's it changed up everything. Yeah. Missouri's had to deal with its share of injuries. John East has 21. The, statistically, even if you're a bad team, it, it's really hard to lose every conference game. You would think that there's one waiting for Dennis Gates in Missouri in the back end of the schedule. Yeah, d despite what the percentages show of their upcoming games, I, I don't see this Missouri team going winless. I, I think they've, they've got too much fight left in them. I've seen them practice, their shoot around, their energy. And then, you know what? There's, there's going to have to just be some nights where, yeah, you get a little lucky where you get some contributions you don't ordinarily get from, and the favorite team is off that night. But 
Stranger things have certainly happened in college basketball this season. I don't see Missouri going in. Ziegler at the penetration at the end of the shot clock. Tennessee used as much time as they could. By the way, Rick Barnes is screaming at Dalton Connect to show more movement on the offensive end. He is one of the reasons, talking to the Tennessee coaching staff, Dalton Connect chose Knoxville was to get challenged by a great coach like Rick Barnes. Certainly improved his defensive acumen. Carlero with the foul. Now, pardon me, Connect. Yeah, they got him after harassing the ball handler there a little bit. You'd like to see Ziegler or Ganey come take it out of Connect's hands, let the guards bring it up for him. They're going to take a further look at this one. Mizzou has made just two of its last 11. Allowing Tennessee to build this lead. Tigers led this game by one at the 11 minute mark. It's a second consecutive game. They had a lead with 11 or 12 to play. Tom, we've talked a lot about what's the difference between this year's team for Tennessee and last year's. I mean, if Tennessee were to go on the road last year and Zakai Ziegler, Santiago Vesky, and Josiah Jordan James combined for four of 18, they lose that game. And, and now those guys don't have to have great nights, night in, night out, for Tennessee to survive. And as ugly as this was, other guys, of course, Dalton Connect, but I thought Adu. And Awaka were strong supporting cast members in this game. Missouri was looking to make history tonight, and it seems as Carter throws one in, they're still alive. Now an eight-point game. Well, Tennessee has really struggled with a very simple downhill little ball screen there, whether they've forgotten to switch, didn't communicate, and that time give up the pop. And that's Missouri basketball. Mizzou is looking to join Penn State in 2013. The only team in the last 25 years to be 0 and 12 or worse in conference play and then beat a top five opponent. Penn State did it by knocking off number four Michigan after being 0 and 14 at Big Ten play. Tennessee subs in Josiah Jordan James, even though he hadn't played much here in this second half. The versatility he brings defensively is exactly why he's in to be able to switch on those downhill ball screens and cover either a guard or a big poppy. James has only played five minutes this half. Here's Carter. Andrew got a piece of it. 110 to play. East now on the block. And he got fouled, stopping the clock with 107 to play. Second on game. Tennessee had a 13 point lead with 257 to play. A couple defensive breakdowns, gotten sloppy with the basketball, and Missouri has some life. Didn't expect that, though. One of the best free throw shooters in the league at 87 percent. East only four for eight from the line tonight. Aiden Shaw will replace Robinson. He certainly needs to make this because they need the points, but just as important so they can get into their press. See if they can't force another turnover. Tennessee without a field goal in the last three minutes. Here's the pressure. They wanted to foul Adu, couldn't get to him in time. He's only a 64% free throw shoot. And instead, they end up fouling James, who's at 77%. Fourth on honor.
And it puts James at the free throw line. First free throw attempts of the night. Tennessee came in 75% clip from the line as a team, only 69% tonight. Side Jordan James, good for Tennessee fans to see him get his confidence back. And he started one of 18 from three in league play, and how huge was that game for him at Kentucky? Yeah, he went four for nine in that game with that slump preceding. He's now a 2,000 point scorer. At 2003 for his career. 10 of 22 on his most recent three point attempts coming into tonight. Tigers have made nine threes tonight, six this half. Under a minute to play, East on Vescovy spins into trouble, spins into a foul. Rick Barnes is furious. East is just getting where he wants to go. It's not quick because he's methodical with that dribble, but finally finds his spot. And consecutive times, Vescovy and Ganey just don't play straight up. They're swiping at the ball, trying to get steals instead of making them shoot over the top with a tough two. Another one coming for East. <laughs> 49 points in the last two games for Sean East. His two best scoring games as the Tiger. Well, Missouri still down by seven. 47 ticks remaining. And they get to eight. Well, Missouri realizes there's really not an, enough time to keep trapping and let Tennessee make multiple passes in the backcourt. Just got a foul right away if you can't get a steal on that inbounds pass. Eight and one and two from the line tonight. Connect and Ganey lead. And Adu quietly has really had a strong second half. He, he makes this. He'll have 10 points, three boards, three blocks, and two assists all in the second half. So that's the type of consistency they want to see out of Adu. As you look at Tennessee, you start thinking all SEC players. Of course, Dalton Connect. Ziegler, I think you've got to talk about Adu. Vescovy with the rip. Three on one if Tennessee wants it. He'll wisely pull it out, nursing an eight-point lead. James avoids the trip to the free throw line, and now Missouri won't foul. What an effort by this Missouri squad, led at the half of the second straight game, and Dalton Connect and the fifth-ranked team in the country take over in the second half. And Missouri is going to fall to 0-13 in league play. Tennessee avoids what would have been a costly quad three loss. And Rick Barnes' team will go to 10-3. They remain a game behind Alabama in the race for the regular season league title. Well, Dalton Connect once again steps up to the challenge, shows you why he's a first-round projected draft pick, why he's likely an All-American and why I think he's the SEC player of the year and more importantly why Tennessee has their best chance at a Final Four possibly in program history. 15 points second half for Connect. Robinson for three. Academic. Tennessee shot 56 percent in the second half. And it's another 20-win season for Rick Barnes, the fifth 
20 win campaign on Rocky top third consecutive and the volunteers improved to 10 and 3 in conference play and keep the heat on Nate Oates in Alabama. Sloppy start to stay the least and Rick Barnes's message at halftime got through but I thought Missouri had a lot to do with that bad start. The difference in this game was that man right there Dalton connect. What happened to Missouri's offense in the second half. Well I thought they settled from the perimeter a little bit too much and Tennessee's depth just took its toll. We want to hear from Dalton Connect, Peter Burns, and the gang. We'll have an interview with him in mere moments for Dane Bradshaw and our fantastic crew in Columbia. I'm Tom Hart. Tennessee holds on for a five point road win against Missouri, and the Volunteers get another 20 win season. To the studio, Peter Burns. Vegas Thomas, you saw number three putting on the